dominant diminished scale for super sounding bass lines. Practice these tips and you too can create sophisticated bass lines as well. Okay, well I'm Donald Witt, the bass instructor for the online bass lessons course I want to play bass.com. Check it out, there's lots of, lots of stuff there. I help aspiring bass players every day reach their goals, whether it be working bass player or just a hobby bass player. So today's lesson I'll be giving you two tips on how to create these sophisticated bass lines um, and be on your way to jazzy bass lines with just a little practice and you know a little creativity and a little practice you'll be able to um, use this this dominant diminished scale um, t for your benefit so the dominant diminished scale is is one of the most commonly used scales over the ever so popular 251 chord progression <laughs> So the dominant diminished scale, also called the symmetrical scale or half step whole step scale, um, and is also referred to as the as an octonic scale, octatonic scale, which meaning it has um, the eight notes in the scale. Octa meaning eight and tonic meaning notes, which has it has eight notes. octatonic scale also symmetrical scale meaning it's symmetrical it's made up of half step whole step half step whole step half step whole step and it not, it doesn't end it's just half step whole step the entire So it's a symmetrical shape, the pattern is symmetrical. Okay, so that's that's why they refer to it as a symmetrical shape also. It's the pattern, the half step and whole step, and so on. It's half step, whole step, the whole way. Half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. Where it is, it's um the it's it's never changing that, and it's just the interval of the whole step and half step um, pattern the whole the entire way. So tip one is to practice this scale over a dominant seventh chord or a dominant seven flat nine. That is where. That is where it best fits, and that's basically where it's, you're going to want to play it only over the dominant seventh or the dom dominant seventh flat nine because right there is the flat nine. So that will be in the chord. So that's that's where you're going to want to play it. And that's where it has the most color, and that's that's where it fits fits the nicest is in that dominant seventh chord or the dominant seventh flat nine. So every time you see that chord, you can break into that dominant diminished scale. And it will add some serious character, some timbre to that that's just um, just really colorful. So it's, that's where you want to use it in that, in the 
dominant seven or dominant seven flat nine chord. Whenever you see that chord or those two chords come up, break out in the dominant diminished scale, and that will, you know, that will add a lot of character. It's it's because of the tension is why it's the jazz artists use it so much because of that tension. Those half steps, intervals in there. so much um, tension that it's that's what gives it its color the timbre to it so that's what makes it sound so interesting so that's why you can get sophisticated bass lines because of that interesting sound and that's that's where it'll come out so tip two is remember remember the pattern because it never changes you can walk from G7 chord right up to right up to the new root of that receiving right there's the root Lines to add up when you come across the G7 or the dominant seven or the dominant flat nine, seven flat nine. It's perfect for walking into those, walking you right up into that root note because the most of the time a two five one is used everywhere. So every time you get that five, you're going to be walking right to that one. When you see that dominant seven chord, you know. Most of the time, unless it's in blues, you'll see dominant sevens all in it. And then the jazz blues, you can use that as well. But definitely in the in the jazz, the two five ones, you will find that the next note after that dominant seven chord is going to be a major seven chord or a major chord. It's going right to the root. So that's that's tip two. Use those use those two tips, and you'll be able to. Use this dominant diminished scale to your benefit and to help create these lines that are so so people people will be impressed when you pull out the dominant diminished scale. They're like, he must know what he's doing because that's you know it's a it's a um, more of an intricate scale. Later on, more of your your music is more intricate that you're playing that that you're going to be utilizing these dominant diminished scales or any of the diminished scales. So that what makes it a dominant diminished scale, because it's a diminished scale, but it's a dominant diminished scale, what makes it that dominant is that first half step. That's going to be what makes that dominant diminished is that first half step, where just a diminished scale is the whole step. So the dominant is this half step right here. That, that interval makes it a dominant diminished scale as opposed to just a diminished scale. So, I mean, and there's a lot of arguments about this, um, about the diminished scales, how they're artificial scales because they're not of the overtone series. The, the major scale is, um, even the major scale is a western scale kind of developed later on, but um, the diminished scales have been around before that. I mean, they date back to 1823. It's been they've been used in some some classical music, um, not a lot, but they have been used. But they're they have been around. But they because of them not being of the overtone series, they call them an artificial scale. So there's a lot of arguments there as to just you know, why why it is what it why it's artificial and not artificial because they have been around and they're just now you know it's just because they're not of the overtone series is why they consider them a um that's that's the argument because it's not an overtone scale from the overtone series that it's an artificial scale but it's been dated back so far that it's you know that it's it's a scale that it's it's been in there you know we've used it forever so you know 
why is it considered an artificial scale? But it, it's because of the makeup and not being of that overtone series. So with that being said, I think that's just about everything about the dominant diminished scale. Maybe not everything, but you know, if you want to know more about it, you can come to uh, wantoplaybase.com um, and see it. I've got you know, a whole section lessons on just the dominant diminished scale and just playing it over a lot of um, dominant chords and, and some chord progressions. So I've got a little bass riff here that, that I'll have just to have fun with. And so here we go. This is dominant diminished scale. And like I said, subscribe down below. I've got lots of these coming out. Cool little bass riffs in just about every one that I put out. So a little something, a little entertainment. So and like I said, if you want to know, want the transcriptions, comment down below. I'll work them up and put them in there for you. So here's the dominant diminished scale pattern right here. Check it out. Subscribe down below. I've got lots more coming. So definitely can't wait to hear from y'all. And let me know if I forgot something. It happens every time. So visit IWantToPlayBass.com. And I've got a free ebook there setting this bad boy up from start to finish for, for success. So can't wait to see y'all there. And hope you enjoyed it. And hope you got something out of it. Okay? Thank y'all. Bye-bye.